Hello, my name is Alex with Ape Tech, Tech Tutorials. Welcome back to yet another Jira video. Today, we're going to be continuing our exploration of a typical Jira software project. If you haven't seen our last video, we covered the entire navigation bar. So please go make sure you watch that video so you basically catch up and be able to follow along. But if you also haven't already, please make sure you're subscribed and make sure you drop a like on this video. If you have any questions about anything I cover in this video, please make sure you drop a comment and I will try to address it in either a reply or a feature video. But with that said, let's jump into today's video. All right, so here we are. Uh, this is our Kanban demonstration project that we configured in the last video. We're gonna be exploring and talking about Kanban first, and then I'm gonna go and talk about Scrum in a in a couple seconds here. The focus of this video is to talk about the left pane here, which is the, not really the navigation, but but this is the, basically how you actually use Jira on a day-to-day -day basis. The navigation is great, like you'll use it, but most of your day-to-day -day interactions with the tool are gonna be in this left pane. This, as I mentioned, right, is a Kanban board, and you can tell it's a Kanban board simply because when you select a Kanban board template, right, you'll get a Kanban board here. Had you selected a scrum type, then you would see that there would be a active sprint and a backlog. So by default, you don't get an active sprint and you don't get a backlog in Kanban or with a Kanban style. So whenever you make a Jira project, you get the ability, and specifically because you're in a company managed one too, right? You get the ability to add multiple boards. So what I'm gonna do throughout this video is I'm actually gonna start with the Kanban, but then I'm gonna go and add a scrum board. And then the next video is gonna be basically focused on that. But you'll be able to see how I can toggle between the two boards. So a Jira software project, it can have both a Kanban board and a scrum board, right? So both are okay. Uh, there is no hard set rule that says you have to be one or you have to be the other. You can actually have both and it's not a problem. For now, we're gonna just continue and kind of talk about the features of a Kanban. Now, below the board selector, you get a roadmap. So this roadmap is a super basic roadmap. It's built into Jira. It's the free version of the roadmap capabilities. And what you can do here is you can create epics, right? So this is a powerful view of, this is my first epic, right? And when you create your epic, uh, you can do, this is my second epic, right? And now you start kind of outlining the, the issues that you want to make. Now this is in lieu of you hitting the create button, right? Uh, typically before the roadmap capabilities came out, you would be hitting the create button in the middle and then you would create your epics and then you can create your stories. But in this roadmap view, you can actually come here, click this little plus sign and automatically start making my first story, right? My second, if I could spell second story. And you'll notice that they're automatically attached. So if I open the ticket here, I'm going to open it in a new tab, but you'll see that this is my first epic and here are the issues that we just created as a story. Again, if you're like in a planning meeting and you're just trying to capture the information, right? This is a great way to, for you to get start creating really, really quickly and not necessarily worry about providing all the additional details that can be provided later, right? So this is just going to be a very quick, put a summary, aka the title, and then start building the relationships, right? Whether it be a story, whether it be a task, or whether it be a bug. Jira treats stories, tasks, and bugs at the same hierarchy level. So a story and a task that like, can't be, like the story cannot be the parent of a task, right? The story and the task in Jira live at the same hierarchy. An epic, however, can be the parent of any of these three. And the story, the task, and the bug can be a child of the epic. We're not gonna talk about it now, but stories, tasks, and bugs can have children, right? And those are, typically known as subtasks. So we'll talk about that again in a future video. Unfortunately, in this view and just the basic roadmap, I can't further decompose this. I would have to, if I wanted to create a subtask, I would actually have to open the story as I just did right now. And you'd wanna come over here and click on the create subtask. So that's like the only way to do it. However, if you're on the advanced roadmap, right, which is part of the premium package, again, whole new set of video series coming in later, you can do that in the advanced roadmaps. You wanna make sure you subscribe and you wanna make sure you hit that like button because I'm gonna be telling you and walking you through how to do advanced roadmaps in the future. So anyways, let's continue with our overview here, right? This is basically the roadmap, again, really powerful. If you create a couple of things here just to, just to discuss here, as you assign issues to folks, kind of similar to the board settings, which I'll show you in a little bit, you can basically just zoom in on just who has an item assigned, and so it'll kind of uh, give you that view. Uh, so here you can see that I don't actually have anything assigned to myself yet, but if I were to like assign the story to myself, 
right? Now when I click on my name, it's just gonna show me that one story that it's assigned to me. It won't show me everything else. Now, status category, right? If only you, if you only are interested in seeing things that are in to do, it'll do that. If you're interested in only seeing work that's in progress or it won't done. And then the last thing is if and when you make releases, you're actually also able to see it or categorize it by releases. So you'll be able to, you'll have a release button here. We'll do that in a little bit. And we'll kind of show that this today view and settings over here are once you create this, you can actually put dates, right? So this sets the start and end date for your issues. If you project manage in that way, right? Where you're interested in putting dates on your Epic. So you can kind of pre-plan when things should be done. You can do that. That's not typically a hundred percent agile, right? Like the most agile folks will tell you just plan it into the sprint and dates dates are inherited by the sprint dates but if you wanted to right if you wanted to have a little bit more rigor or structure to your planning you most definitely have that capability here in this roadmap now something that's not shown here right and something i'll discuss in future videos is an epic in jira is the highest level of a hierarchy you're allowed to go to if you want to have an issue type above the epic right so basically have a parent to the epic you can do that uh, very easily if you have the premium subscription so yet again another reason why you want to upgrade a premium because you're able then to basically enable parent, like you can enable issue types above the Epic and then above that one if you wanted to as well. So it's, I think it's worth the payment. I think it's worth from a planning perspective and from like an executive dashboard or executive management type of thing or across like portfolio level, I think it's worth it. But that's, those are some of the cool things you can do. Now, this is pretty much it. One thing I'll show you here is like, you can't do the dates here for the stories. That's another limitation. I'm going to do an in-depth video of what you can do just with the roadmap. And then I'm going to do an in-depth series of videos with advanced roadmaps. And then I'll do a couple like con compare and contrast. The next thing is your board. Now that I've actually made stories and epics, you have the board. So the board here is basically where, where all the work happens, right? So you'll notice that you have a status, right? You have a selected for development in progress and done. Won't cover those in this video. Cause again, the purpose of this video is to kind of just walk you through the navigation of this. But in a future video, again, if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're going to be talking about what can you do with your columns here, how you can add a backlog to a Kanban style board and how you can rename these things. So we're going to go in detail to those things. So again, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of that. And the last thing here we'll talk about before we end this very quick video here is the reports. Now these are unique to the board. If you would have had a scrum board, the reports that are available to you are going to be appropriate to Scrum. These reports here are appropriate to a Kanban style, right? So in Kanban, it's work in motion, right? You're just visualizing your work as it's going through. You can do some planning, but you're not doing a lot of planning. You're not as disciplined, I'll, I'll say, as like if you were following Scrum, right? And so you're just going to get the reports here that are appropriate for the metrics that Kanban usually tracks. And cycle time is one of those things. So you'll see this and the cumulative flow diagram. In future videos, I'll kind of do a deeper dive into what each one of these are. But for now, just know that as you toggle from board to board within that same project, you can actually alter the reports that are visible. These reports are gonna be different and they're gonna be guided or dictated really by the board type that you've selected. So that's pretty much it. That's just that upper half. Uh, make sure you're subscribed because in this next video, we're gonna talk about this bottom portion of this navigation. So thank you very much, really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe. If you have any comments of what I just talked about, feel free to drop a comment with your question. I'll try to address it and stay tuned because I am going to be going in depth into pretty much everything here that I've discussed in future videos. So you're not going to want to miss those. So thank you very much and uh, see you in the next video.